good morning to one and all welcome to the course auditing for third b com students i am dr r lata assistant professor in department of commerce in adm college for women nagapatinam in today's presentation we are going to discuss about meaning of auditing objectives materiality in auditing techniques of auditing difference between auditing and accountancy scope of auditing classification and types of auditing next first we will see origin of audit the term audit is derived from the latin word audier which means to hear in early days an auditor used to listen to the accounts read over by an accountant in order to check them the audit is a methodical procedure of independently examining the financial information of an entity with the aim of giving an opinion on true and fair view here organization refers to all the entities regardless of their size structure nature and form auditing in india has been described in different ways auditing is a systematic and independent examination of data statements records operations and performance of an enterprises for a stated purpose in any auditing situation the auditor perceives and recognizes the propositions before him for examination collects evidence evaluates the same and on the basis formulates his judgment is communicated through his audit report the institute of chartered accountant of india according to spicer and beckler auditing is such an examination of books of accounts and vouchers of business as will enable the auditor to satisfy himself that the balance sheet is properly drawn up so as to give a true and a fair view of the state of affairs of the business the profit and loss account gives true and a fair view of the profit and the loss for the financial period according to the best of information and the explanation given to him and as shown by the books and if not in what respect he is not the objectives of auditing the main objectives of auditing is to ensure the financial reliability of any organization independent opinion and judgment form the objectives of auditing auditing also helps to ensure that the books of accounts are kept according to the rules stipulated in the companies and whether the books of accounts show a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company or not there are two main objectives of auditing the primary objectives and the secondary objectives are incidental objectives the first one primary objectives as per section 227 of the companies act 1956 the primary duty of the auditor is to report to the owners whether the balance sheet gives a true and fair view of the companies state of affairs and the profit and loss account gives a correct figure of profit or loss for the financial year the secondary objectives it is also called the incidental objectives as it is the related to the satisfaction of the main objectives the incidental objectives of auditing are detection and prevention of fraud and detection and prevention of errors next detection of fraud the detection of fraud is just an incidental objective the fraud refers to intentional misrepresentation of financial information with the intention to deceive fraud can take place in the form of manipulation of accounts misappropriation of cash and misappropriation of goods it is of great importance for the auditor to detect any frauds and prevent their recurrence misappropriation of cash misappropriation of cash is the easiest way of fraud especially in large business houses 
where there is limited or no communication between the owner of an organization and the cashier following are some of the ways through which misuse or misappropriation can be done theft of cash receipt and irrelevant cash and showing false payment to workers creditors purchases etc showing false payments or excess payments in cash book cash sale can be shown as credit sale the internal control system should be followed in receipts and payments of cash so that the work done by one person should be automatically checked by another person next misappropriation of goods misappropriation of goods can be done in the following ways goods may be stolen by employees or with the help of employees by issuing false credit notes to customer on account of goods return detection of misappropriation of goods is more difficult rather than detecting misappropriation of money especially where management is not much cautions and sound system of bookkeeping internal control and adequate system of securities are not available to keep control on the physical verification of goods settlement of physical stock with the books and the careful checking of sale and purchases is must manipulation of accounts two types of manipulation of accounts are mainly done by top management to mislead some parties for some specific purpose showing higher profits following are the reasons behind showing higher profit than actual first one to obtain credit or to enhance existing credit from financial institutions to also to show credit worth is to suppliers of the company to maintain confidence of shareholders to get more commission where commission is calculated on the basis of profit earned to declare dividend at higher rate next showing low profit following are the reasons behind showing lower profit than actual to avoid or to reduce direct taxes of the company next to purchase shares at lower price to give wrong impression to the other competitors of the business next we have seen about detection of fraud now detection of errors auditors should be very careful about the detection of errors because manipulation in accounting may also appear as error or it may be a result of carelessness on part of a bookkeeper errors may be broadly classified as follows error of principle error of omission errors of duplication error of commission compensating errors first the error of principle where the recording of the items of transactions are not done according to the principle of accounting it is known as to be an error of principle these errors are not traceable from trial balance these errors may be committed in, uh, intentionally or for the purpose of manipulation of accounts to inflate or deflate profit following are the examples of such type of errors providing excessive or inadequate depreciation where revenue expenses may be treated as capital expenditure or vice versa where valuation of plant and machinery stock investment and other assets are not done according to the principle of accounting next where income received is credited to personal account of the person who is making the payment for example commission received from mr a credited to mr a's account instead of the commission account it will increase creditors in the balance sheet and reduce profit in the profit and loss account where the payment of expenses is posted to the personal account of a person who receives payment for example the rent paid to mr a wrongly debited to mr a's account it will increase profit and also increase debtors in the balance sheet next errors of omission there may be two types of omission of entry while recording the transaction in the books of accounts 
the transaction is totally omitted from the books of accounts it will not affect the trial balance and the detection of such error is difficult following are the examples of such errors omission of purchase or sale from the purchase day book or the sale day book respectively omission of outstanding or unpaid expenses next examples of the transaction which are partially omitted from the books of accounts or the total of purchase day book or sale day book omitted to the posted in purchases or sale account respectively where payment or receipt transaction is omitted to be recorded in ledger account from cash book next errors of duplication the re the detection of error of duplication is very difficult it might be detected with the proper and minute observation of accounts for example purchase may be recorded twice with the original and duplicate copy of purchase invoice etc it is also possible to post the total of any ledger account twice in the trial balance next error of commission the error of commission occurs the entry made in the books of original entry or the ledger account is wrong let us see the following examples purchase of goods for rupees 25000 wrongly entered as rupees 2500 in purchase book credit purchase from ab company wrongly credited to ba company's account next wrong totaling total of purchase day book is totaled as rupees 1 lakh 12500 instead of 1 lakh 21500 next purchase from ab company wrongly debited to ab company account instead of crediting ab company account and debiting purchase account next compensating error when the effect of an error compensate with another error it is known to be a compensating error such error do not affect the trial balance for example total of a debit account as well as credit account total short by rupees 7500 this type of error will compensate both prevention of errors and fraud after the completion of audit the auditor can suggest his client to make changes in the accounting systems and also to improve his internal control system as an auditor cannot do anything directly to prevent errors and fraud auditors are expected to conduct audit as per professional standards expected from him he cannot guarantee that no fraud exists an auditor should ensure and follow these standards next internal control system while recording the business transaction whether accounting principle are being followed or not policies of management are being followed or not whether provisions laid in the companies act are being followed while preparing books of accounts whether balance sheet and the profit and loss account show true and far view of state of affairs of concern the following factors decide whether an auditor is responsible for non detection of errors and frauds an auditor should audit as per the principles laid out for auditing he should fulfill his duty as per the prevailing standards of his profession error should be rectified during his audit and fraud is to be reflected in his audit report even a simple hint that reflect that there is something wrong should not be overloaded he should believe on substantial accuracy in statement of accounts next materiality in auditing what is materiality materiality is a concept or convention within auditing and accounting relating to the importance significance of an am amount transaction or discrepancy what is the meaning of materiality in auditing in auditing materiality means not just a quantified amount but the effect that amount will have in various context during the audit planning process the auditor decides what the level of materiality will be taking into account the entirety of the financial statements to be audited 
Next, why is materiality important and why is the concept of materiality so important to an auditor? As the basis for the auditor's opinion, ISA requires auditor to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement. The concept of materiality is therefore fundamental to the audit. It is applied by auditors at the planning stage and when performing the audit and evaluating the effect of identified misstatements on the audit and of uncorrected misstatement if any on the financial statements. What are the techniques of auditing? The evidence are very important for an auditor to form an opinion regarding financial statements if auditor fails to collect proper evidence. It will reduce the reliability of audit report. The method of collecting evidence is called the audit technique. The various techniques of auditing to be applied by the auditor under different circumstances. Following are the few important audit techniques. First one, vouching. When the audit verifies accounting transactions with documentary evidence, it is called vouching. Through vouching, the auditor verifies authority and authenticity of records. Next one, confirmation. The confirmation is a technique used by an auditor to validate the correctness of the transaction. For example, an auditor obtains return statement directly from debtors to confirm that debtors balance has appeared in the books of client. Next, reconciliation. The reconciliation is a technique used by an auditor to know the reason of differences in balances. For example, to know the difference in the bank book of the client and the bank balances as appeared in the bank statement or passbook. The auditor prepares the reconciliation statement. The same method may be used for debtors, creditors, etc. Next to one, testing. The testing is the technique of selecting representative transactions out of whole accounting data to draw a conclusion about all items. Next one, physical examination. The physical examination requires verification and the confirmation of the physical existence of tangible assets as appears in the balance sheet like cash in hand, land and building, plant and machinery, etc. Next one, analysis. The analysis is technique used by an auditor to segregate important facts and to further study their relationship. Next one, scanning. By scanning of books of accounts, an experienced auditor can identify those entries which would require his attention. It is also called scrutiny of accounts. Next one, inquiry. This method is used to collect in depth information about any transaction. Next one, verification of posting. To verify posting from books of original entry to ledger account and confirm the balance. An auditor is required to verify the postings. For example, to verify a sale book, an auditor may verify postings from the sale register to the sale ledger. He may further calculate balances of the sale register and the sale book. Next one, flow chart. The flowchart technique is used by an auditor to determine the stage of transaction and the generation of documents at all levels of transaction. Next one, observation. Through observation, an auditor get an idea about reliability of the process and the procedure of an organization. Next, the difference between accounting and auditing. The first one, definition. Accounting is referred to as the process of recording, classifying, summarizing and interpreting the financial transaction statements to determine the financial position of an organization. The auditing, the auditing is referred to as the process of examining the financial records such as transaction and the statements of an organization in order to find any discrepancy during the process of recording of the transaction and also to verify the accuracy of the records. Next nature, it is concerned with the finalization of account. 
it is concerned with the establishment of reliability of financial statements objectives of accounting the objective is to ascertain the training result the auditing the object is to certify the correctness of financial statement the commencement the accounting commences when bookkeeping ends the auditing commencement begins when accounting end the scope it involves various financial statement involves maintenance of books of accounts it depends upon the agreement or upon the provisions of law it goes beyond books of accounts and auditing the report of accounting an accountant is not required to submit any report to the proprietor of the business an auditor is required to submit a report to the proprietor of the business the mode of operations the accounting is done on a daily basis as transaction happen on a daily basis for any business the auditing it is a periodical assessment and as a done monthly quarterly or yearly the uh, auditing accounting accounting is done by accountants auditing is done by auditors scope of auditing the term scope of auditing means the audit procedures which is considered necessary for the achievement of desired objectives the auditor should keep in view the following points first one legal conditions while determining the scope of audit and auditor should follow the rules and regulations applicable on the audit work next one validity of data the auditor should use various methods to test the validity of data he should confirm the data provided in the financial statements is reliable next one cover all the aspect the auditor should cover all the functions of business no all its working any aspect related to financial statement may not be ignored a business is small or large auditor should cover all the comparison the auditor can compare the accounts record with the financial statement to know the true pictures he determines whether the relevant information is properly communicated or not next one apply his skill while preparing the report an auditor should apply his professional skill and experience to prove that figures and fact next one sufficient record the auditor checks that record and relevant data is sufficient he also use other test and verification procedure next one judgment the auditor also considers or judgment of the management made in preparing the financial statements the auditor must have the quality of judgment when he fails to find the data in the books of account internal check it is not possible for the auditor to check each and every voucher and transaction so he should try to rely on internal check system he is also born to make guess work on the basis of available data next perceive evidence the auditor his opinion as true fair instead of send person correct because the available evidence is perceived the personal judgment also affect the value of any items misstatement problem due to the limitations of audit sometimes some material misstatement remain undiscovered so statement do not show the exact view of operations next clear the doubt if the auditor smells any fraud he should check send person items and clear his doubt he should extend the pro procedure to confirm his doubt next opinion of auditor if auditor is satisfied about financial information of business then he can express the unqualified opinion otherwise he will express qualified opinion the classification of audit or types of audit the classification the basis of organization the basis of the functions basis of audit approach basis of audit dimensions classification of audit and the basis of organization statutory audit 
The statutory audit refers to the audit of accounts of a business enterprises carried out compulsorily under the provisions of a statute or law. It is the audit carried out compulsorily under any statute, any law. The features of statutory audit are the statutory audit is compulsory under law. Next, the statutory audit is required to be conducted by a qualified auditor. In the case of statutory audit, the rights, duties and liabilities of the auditor are governed by the statute or law applicable to the undertaking. The statutory audit is an independent audit. The statutory audit is an external audit. The statutory audit must be a complete or full audit and cannot be partial. The private audit or voluntary audit. Where an audit is not compulsory under any statute but is undertaken by the owners voluntarily to get the benefit of audit. The audit is called a private audit. In other words, private audit refers to the audit of accounts or private enterprises such as a sole trading concern, partnership firms and other individuals and institutions. The advantages of private audit. The audit assures to the owners that the accounts of the business are properly maintained and there are no irregularities. It provides a moral check on the employees. It helps the owners of the business to know the real profitability and the state of affairs of their business. The audited accounts serve as the basis of assessment of tax liability. The audited accounts facilitate the process of raising loans from banks and other financial institutions. The government auditor. The government audit refers to the audit of accounts of a government departments and office, government companies and a statutory or public corporations. The features of government audit are the government audit is prescribed for by law. It is conducted either by the Comptroller and Auditor General of India and his staff or professional chartered accountant approved by the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. It is internal audit. A government audit is a continuous audit. The objectives of government audit to ensure that all payments has been sanctioned by the competent authority to ensure that every payment is made as per the rules and regulations, to see that the payments have been made to the right person, to ensure that the expenditure is not excessive, to see that the payments are properly classified as capital and revenue, to verify the existence of stocks and stores, to ensure that a proper system of stock taking has been adopted. The government audit may be classified into three types. They are audit of government department and office, audit of government companies, audit of statutory corporations, registered or statutory corporations. The classification of audit on the basis of functions, the internal auditor. The internal audit is a continuous and a systematic review of the accounting, financial and other operations of a concern by the staff specially appointed for the purpose. In other words, it is the audit of accounts by the staff specially appointed for the purpose. Next, objectives of internal audit. To ascertain whether internal check and accounting system are adequate and effective. To ascertain whether predetermined policies, plans and procedures have been complied with. To ascertain the reliability of the accounting and other data. To evaluate the performance of the personnel. To ascertain whether the properties of the concern and the safeguarded. To suggest to the management and the improvement desired in the in The features of internal audit. It is generally undertaken by large concerns. It is not compulsory. The scope of internal audit may vary depending upon the nature and the size of the concern. It may be in addition to external audit. It is conducted by the staff of the concern. The techniques and the methods of auditing employed in internal audit are the same as those in external audit. 
It is an integral part of internal control. The staff engaged in internal audit is appointed by the management. They are responsible to the management. The external audit. It is a type of audit performed by auditor outside the business organization. Qualified chartered accountants are appointed as external auditor. The advantages of external audit. The external audit are not perfect, but they do offer many benefits above a regular internal audit. Consider some advantages of external audit procedures. They are more impartial than internal audits. External auditor have no job outside of conducting your audit. Outside, I see your organization differently than you do. There is quicker identification of possible problem areas. They provide validation or invalidation of concerns raised during your internal. Classification of audit on the basis of time. Continuous audit. The continuous audit is one where the auditor's staff is occupied continuously on the account whole the year round and perform interim audit. It is an audit under which detailed examination of the books of accounts is conducted continuously throughout the year. It is continuous review of the accounts of the organization. It is generally applicable to banking company and insurance company. Next advantages, easy and a quick discover of errors and frauds, technical knowledge, quick presentation of accounts, keep the client staff regular, moral check on the client staff, efficient audit, preparation of interim accounts is very easy, audit staff can be kept busy. Next one, interim audit. It is an audit conducted between two annual audits. In other words, it is the audit conducted in the middle of the financial year. It is carried out for some specific purpose for declaring interim dividend, ascertaining interim profits, advantages of interim audit. Quick discovery of errors and frauds, impose moral check on client staff, helpful for speed up the final audit, the useful for pu publication of interim figures, the audit becomes easy and can be completed without lapse of time. Next, final audit or annual or periodical audit. It is an audit carried out after the preparation of financial statement. It is an audit where the auditor takes up his work of checking the books of accounts only at the end of the accounting year. In this case, the audit work is commenced and completed in the single uninterrupted session. Advantages, cost of audit is less than that of continuous audit. Audit work is completed in one continuous sitting, not causing any dislocation of client work. No possibility of alteration of figures. It is not mechanical and monotonous. Next, classification of audit on the basis of scope. Complete audit. In this type of audit, the auditor is required to check each and every transaction recorded in the books of accounts. He has to examine each and every voucher, document or correspondence relating to the transaction. This type of audit is not possible for large sized organizations. Next one, partial audit. In partial audit, the auditor is not required to examine all the books of accounts. Only a part of the accounts or some transactions as desired by the clients may be scrutinized. This type of audit cannot be followed in the case of statutory audit. Next, classification of audit on the basis of objective. The balance sheet audit. The balance sheet audit is very popular in the United States of America. The balance sheet audit is an annual audit and covers each and every items of nominal accounts as appeared in profit and loss account. Assets, liabilities, reserves, provisions, stocks and surplus balance sheet audit is also done by highly skilled accountants occasional audit an occasional audit is an audit which is conducted once a while whenever the need rises in other words it is a kind of audit which is not conducted on regular basis 
but is conducted for a special event time or purpose thank you so much